Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the But What Does God Say podcast. I am your host, Liliana Rowland, and today I'm here with New South Church's Pastor Adam Mostert to talk about the topic of the Book of Life. So I think we should start out by asking, what is the Book of Life? The Book of Life, we read of uh, the Book of Life in different places in Scripture, for example, in Revelation, at the very end, or toward the very end, chapter 20, um, there are books that are opened at the Great White Throne Judgment. And one of the books, and this is from uh, Revelation 20, verse 12, he, saw, he says, I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Then another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the, ju- and the dead were judged by what was written in the books, according to what they had done. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it. Death and Hades gave up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one, according to what they had done. Then death and Hades... Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. So it's very important to be, you know, to have your name found in the book of life, because if your name is there, you're not thrown in the book. You're not thrown into the lake of fire. You're you enter into life with God, life in, in his presence, in his blessed presence forever and ever. Another place in Revelation, Revelation 13, 8, um, it says that um, there's a time when uh, those who dwell on the earth will worship the beast. This is Revelation 13, 8. Everyone whose name has not been written before the foundation of the world in the book of of life of the lamb who was slain. That's really important for me to understand what this book of life is. There's not only implications future for your name being written in the book of life, but it this text actually gives more details as to when were our names written in this book. And John says in Revelation 13:8, it was before the foundation of the world, before creation. And he actually extends the title of this book of life. It's the book of the life of the lamb who was slain. And that's talking about Jesus. And it's speaking about his crucifixion. And so why are they, why are these, uh, uh, why do they enter into life? Well, it's because Jesus died for them. He was slain for them. And, uh, it's called the book of life because of what Jesus has done for them. So their names are associated with him. And, and so that's a, that's a quick uh, understanding of where, where, you know, what, what is this book of life? Your names are written there. And um, that, that will actually be, um, it'll mark whether we go to heaven or we don't, in fact. And that is actually very refreshing to know that our God knows, you know, what is truly in our hearts, that our God is all-knowing and that he will always be all-knowing. I think my next question would just be, can you elaborate on what it means when it says before the foundation of the world? Yeah, the foundation of the world is creation. So Genesis 1-1 in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And that's referring to the foundation uh, of the world. And before that, John is saying, there was a book. And our names were written in that book. And uh, that book was called The Life of the Lamb Who Was Slain. So there's a lot of implications just right there when you think about um, wait a second, you mean God knew that Jesus was going to come into the world and be slain for people before everything was created? That's right. And that means uh, that's actually plan A. <laughs> it's, there's, the cross is not plan B. Plan A is that Jesus was going to come into the world and save sinners and their names would be written in the book of life as well. So then do we know whose names are written in the book of life? And I guess 
The second part to that question would be, is everyone written in the book of life? Or, or is everyone's names written in the book of life? Well, that second question um, is no. Not everyone's name is written in the book. And once your name is written in the book, it doesn't come out of the book. <laughs> um, and so sometimes uh, folks will say this is, this is a, the list of names is the list of the elect, God's chosen, um, those who are predestined before the foundation of the world. And God wrote names in a book, and he doesn't write everyone's name in the book. Do we know who's in the book and who's out of the book? For sure, I, I don't think so. Um, but we can have a, a, a pretty um, confident, we can be confident as to who is um, because like Paul, I, Paul actually says in Philippians 4 uh, that he knows certain people are written in the book of life. Their names are written in the book of life because they believe in Jesus. They live for him. They want to, um, they, they show forth fruits um, in their life and and so the point, the point of understanding, okay, the, the book of life, um, your name has been written before the foundation of the world. This is the people whom God has chosen before the foundation of the world. Their names are written. And these are the, also the ones who Jesus dies for effectively. And the Spirit causes new birth in their lives. And they come to faith and they believe and trust in Christ and they have surety, assurance that God will keep them to the end um, because he's chosen them, because he's written their names in the book of life. So we can have a lot of confidence <laughs> in life because our salvation is not based on what we do or based on our decision even, but it's based on God who has uh, written our names down in heaven. In fact, um, Jesus speaks to this in Luke chapter 10 when he sends uh, his followers out to do ministry. And 70, it's actually the number 72, they return to Jesus with joy. This is Luke 10, verse 17. They return to, uh, with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the subjects are or that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Isn't that interesting? That Jesus is saying, Don't don't get so excited about uh, ministry success. Get more excited that God has written your names in heaven, in the book of life, I think he's referring to. And, and that's, a, that's a, a reminder to us that, you know, we can oftentimes think about our lives and we think, well, it's, life is good because there's success and there's success in ministry. But Jesus says, don't, don't, don't do that. Don't think, don't put all your joy in your successes. Put your joy where it can't be removed. Put your joy uh, in, in considering that your names have been written in heaven. And that is, a, that is a, a place where we can rest. That's a place where we can have true joy in God's work and what he's done. I guess the next logical thing for me to ask, or at least what comes to my mind next, is the question of if you believe in Jesus, are you in the book of life for sure? I know that all of us would like to believe that we're in the book of life but as you said before not all of us are in the book of life so is it a case of you know exactly who's in the book of life or is it you know i believe in jesus so i'm pretty sure that my name is written in the book of life like would you say that's pretty accurate yes i would yeah if you if you're trusting in christ um you know paul actually he talks about this in first thessalonians um chapter 1, where he speaks to uh, this little church uh, in Thessalonica, and he says some pretty profound words here he, about, their, um, about their lives. He says, we give thanks to you, God, 
We give thanks to God always for you constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith, your labor of love, your steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you. Okay, right there you could actually say, we, we know that your names are written in the book of life. Why, Paul? And he explains why. For we know, this is verse 4, 1 Thessalonians 1, verse 4, for we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. So he says, we know that God's chosen you. We know, I think you could say, we know your names are written in the book of life because when the gospel was preached, it came to you not as some empty word, but you were convicted by that word. And not just convicted by your sin, but you were convicted to, to know the truth that Jesus died for you, that he reigns for you, that, he, that he's your king. And when the word was proclaimed, uh, there was an effect, which was faith. And he goes on to say, you know what kind of men we proved to be among you, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit. So they believed the word with conviction. They uh, became imitators of Paul and other Christians, and they had great joy even in the midst of suffering. Paul looks at that and he says, I know that God chose you, or I know your names are written in the book of life, which is glorious to me because the foundation for all that work in our lives, our conviction, our, our joy through suffering is not in our own ability, but it's actually in God's choosing. It's in God's writing our names down in the book of life. What kind of life? Life that has conviction about Jesus. Life that suffers well with joy in the Holy Spirit. It's all from God and it's not in, of our, in and of ourselves. Do you think we could add or take away names from the book of life? I don't, I don't believe so. I know some people, they, they might think that, um, um, but I think that um, once your name is written in the book of life, um, it's not coming out. Once you are chosen, <laughs> you're chosen, and we can have solid confidence in that, um, that there's no uh, adding or there's no subtraction to the book of life, and that's why that passage in Revelation 13 is so important that those who, um, there's a worldwide movement to worship this person who's called the beast in Revelation. And the, the reason why they don't, John says, is their names are written. There's no change. So it's not because, you know, there's no, uh, they're worshiping the beast, therefore he takes their names out of the book of life. Or they don't worship the beast, therefore he puts them, their names in the book of life. No, their names are written before the foundation of the world in Revelation 13, 8. And there they will remain. And that's one of the ways that we can have great assurance of our salvation um, because we know that once our names are written, they can't be erased. I guess the next question that comes to mind is, do you think the book of life is a tangible book or do you think it's more of a metaphorical book? I think that it's I think it's a tangible book uh, with with our names. It's going to be a big book because, um, you know, there's going to be millions upon millions of people uh, who are going to be in heaven. Um, and and so, yeah, I, I do think that there's a book. And actually, my conception of um, deeper uh, theological uh, topics like, boy, like the book of life. I, I think about uh, this idea of this. there's a book with names written in it and, and Jesus, when he died on the cross, his blood was shed for each and every one of those names, each which, are rep which represents a person. And he dies for them and, and they are secure in their salvation. Jesus, when he died, his blood bought them. He redeemed them. And that's why he says, this is the book of the life of the lamb who was slain. 
So referring back to that Revelation passage, talking about seeing many books and one of them being the book of life and seeing everyone, including those from heaven and hell, being judged based on what was written in those books that they have done and whether their name was in the book of life. Do you believe that? That is only going to be one day where all of us are judged based on that? Or do you believe that that is what happens when we die? That when we die, we we go, well, oh, the way I kind of see it is we go to the gates of heaven and if there our name is written in the book of life and we have chosen Jesus as our savior that we will be able to go to heaven. Do you believe that that judgment happens individually for us when we die or all in one day? I think if I understand your question right, I think the text in Revelation 20 is referring to one day um, and its future and everybody will be there. Everybody will be raised from the dead Um, We will be given new bodies, and yes, everybody will be judged, and our confidence will be in the fact that our names were written in the book of life, and that Jesus died for us, and there was uh, saving faith given to us, and and there will be no surprise. So if I died today... um, And I want to, the the word says that those who are absent from the body are present with the Lord. Um, And those who are believers, we have this hope that if I, if we die today, we will be in the presence of the Lord and never shall that be uh, changed. But there will come a time in the future when uh, the great, when Jesus returns, there will be uh, the raising of the dead bodily, so we believe in the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting, amen. All of our bodies will be raised up, and so our spirits will be reunited with our bodies and will be given, and our bodies will be made new. So, like Jesus' body, he didn't get a different body, his body was resurrected. You could actually see the wounds in his hand, hands and his feet. And so it's not a totally new body, but it's a renewed body. It's a resurrected body in power and immortality. And so it will be for us. We will be reunited and we will all stand before uh, the Lord. And um, I think we'll have confidence to say, I know, (laughs) I know my name is written in the book of life. And because of what Christ has done, and plus I had a few years in the presence of the Lord, so I have confidence that that, uh, that he won't change his mind. Um, And so uh, I think we can have uh, that assurance that we will stand before the Lord together and we will see this happen. We will see this great white throne judgment where God will throw death and Hades into the lake of fire and the new heavens, new earth will be ushered in. And uh, it will be an awesome, awesome sight. All right. Well, that's all the time we have for today's podcast. But thank you for listening. Be sure to follow us on Instagram for updates um, and for letting us know if you have any questions. Um, Or you can talk to Pastor Adam Moster in person and ask him questions. We would love to hear your questions and hopefully be able to answer them on a podcast. Stay tuned for next week's podcast on male leadership from a woman's perspective and have a great day.